Hey guys, what's going on? Sherman here. I wanted to do this video to show you guys a couple of new items that I got in the mail the other day and to do a rant on medical preparedness. Now I know my last few videos have been on trauma kits and first aid and all that stuff, but first aid preparedness is something that I've been very passionate about for many years now and it is something that I have gotten some knowledge on that I have some experience with and uh, it's something that I would like to pursue in the future as possibly a career course. Uh, but it is something that I'm passionate about and something that I just feel led to try to, I guess, stress to you guys. I really love making videos, explaining my kits, explaining the importance of some of these kits. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to talk about a couple of trauma kits that I got in the mail from ITS Tactical. And like I said, do a little bit of ranting. But uh, first of all, I have the ITS tactical ETA trauma kit. This is the basic kit. Uh, I'll get to that here in a second. But ETA it, uh, stands for um, exterior bleeding, tension pneumothorax, and airway obstruction, or maybe extremity hemorrhage for the E. And uh, the EDC trauma kit obviously stands for everyday carry. Now, I've been getting some questions lately about, you know, uh, what should I carry? You know, I want to make a trauma kit for my everyday carry setup, uh, what should I get? Well, one of these is gonna excel in that department more than the other, but I think they're both excellent options for that. If you just want to go ahead and, um, just go ahead and buy an already made trauma kit and not have to go around and searching. I am, I, I do really wanna make a video though, showing you guys step by step what I think you should put in an, e, in an EDC trauma kit that you can carry on you or not maybe not necessarily on you but with your EDC gear or put in your range bag your hunting bag whatever I'd like to make a video showing you the step-by-step -step, uh, components and a price breakdown where you can buy them and all that good stuff but anyway as an already made kit these are two of the best that I've seen on the market for what they are uh, ITS Tactical is a great company ITS stands for Eminent Threat Solutions if you have not been to their website definitely go check them out they have some excellent gear for sale some really cool kits like urban survival kits escape and evasion kits uh, lock picking sets of course you know medical kits a lot of really great gear and all their pouches they make or the, or the pouches they sell are made in collaboration with Zulu nylon gear uh, they make the ETA trauma kit pouch that I have reviewed on my channel. I'll put a link to that in the description below. And I actually carry that pouch on my Hazard 4 EVAC Plan B, which is my EDC pack. So I use that and have a lot of experience with it. And this is the trauma kit that was that the ETA trauma kit pouch was made to hold. Um, like I said, this is the basic kit. Uh, they have this kit, and then they have the standard ETA trauma kit. And uh, I believe the only difference between the basic and the standard is that this basic kit does not come with a nasal pharyngeal airway and a 14 gauge decompression needle. Now those two items, um, unless you're a medical professional such as EMT slash or, or paramedic um, or like a combat medic, corpsman, anything like that, unless you have some medical training, you're not going to know how to use those and if you try to use them, you're going to potentially severely uh, hurt your patient or, you know, God forbid you have to use them on yourself. That would kind of suck. But uh, the, those two items, uh, you're not going to know how to use. Like I said, unless you're a medical professional, I don't know how to use them currently. Uh, so it's not really important to have them in an already made kit like this. It is kind of neat to have them. Like, like I said, with my last video that I did on my first aid slash trauma kit, the my condor pouch, I do have a 14 gauge needle and a nasal pharyngeal airway, but as like I was saying, I may, not, I may not know how to use them, but somebody might be around me who does and they might be able to use it on me or they can use it on someone else because I have my kit and then they may not have their kit, but they have the knowledge, you know, uh, but anyway, so that is, uh, that's really the only difference that and I, I think this one is like $20 cheaper. Uh, so, uh, this kit ranges from $100 to $120. Like I said, the $100 version is this one, the basic, and the $120 is the one with the decompression mojo dart needle and the nasal pharyngeal airway. So, right off the bat, this is what you're going to get. It is a vacuum sealed package. Very nice. You can see it has a contents list right here. 
And I'm just going to go over that with you guys real quick. You have a quick clot combat gauze, LE for law enforcement and it is a hemostatic gauze. If you guys know what quick clot is, that's what it is, it's a blood coagulating um, material. So the quick clot combat gauze is a hemostatic gauze, meaning that it, it coagulates blood and stops bleeding. A four inch pressure dressing, which is like an Israeli bandage. A Z-fold dressing, which is a, a gauze pad that is, it is not rolled up circularly, it's rolled up in a Z-folded pattern so that if you drop it, it's not going to roll. That's the problem with rolled gauze and why the military don't really use them anymore. And that is because if you're trying to wrap somebody's wound in gauze, like I said, you drop it, a rolled gauze is going to keep rolling and all unroll and become unsterile. So the Z-fold gauze, it's like I said, it's square and it's Z-folded on top of itself, kind of like an accordion, an accordion's out. So if you drop it, it doesn't do anything. So it also makes it a lot more compact. Um, also, you'll see S-fold gauze. It's the same thing, but I highly recommend that that kind of thing. Uh, nitro gloves, one pair. Um, some people ask me what nitrile is, or nitrile, however you want to pronounce it. it. It's just another form. It's another type of rubber, basically. Uh, it's not latex, because a lot of people are allergic to latex. Uh, I don't believe there's any... I don't, I don't think nitrile is... Um, uh, what do you want to call it? I've, ne I've just never heard of anybody allergic to it. Uh, two chest seals. They are made by Halo. You can look those up online. The Halo chest seals basically for for helping with a sucking chest wound, uh, i.e. tension pneumothorax. And it's basically a clear adhesive bandage you, po you put over a chest wound, like a puncturing chest wound. And uh, you, you can look up some videos online about it. I'm not going to go too much in detail, but it's a chest seal. But you get two for an entry and exit, so that's pretty neat. An elastic bandage, uh, four inch, as you can see right there. And uh, I've seen some videos online, and you can look it up because I'm not a, an expert on this either, but there's some videos on how to use an elastic bandage as an improvised tourniquet. So that would be a very, a very cool and useful thing to learn how to do. Um, combat casualty card and a pencil. So you can write down the combat casualty card. And it also has an expiration date, October 2016, which I'm, I'm really not sure how any of this could expire, but I guess it just, it loses some of its sterility after that, because all these items are sterile, obviously, in their packaging. And um, in, inside this, or not inside, but this um, vacuum seal pack is resealable. It has kind of a Ziploc deal going on up here. So there's where you would rip it right there. Rip it open, get some of your contents. If you only need a couple of things, you can just seal it back up. So, um, I, I, I will do a video opening this up and showing you guys the contents. I really don't think it will ruin the sterility because I think some of the things, I think most of the things in there are individually wrapped anyway. And uh, I'll show you some of these items in the ETA Trauma Kit pouch. But anyway, there's that kit right there. Uh, very cool. Like I said, definitely go check that out on their website. And then this one, which I've been carrying for a few days now. If you guys keep up with me on Instagram, you'll see this uh, that I took some pictures of. And uh, This is the EDC Trauma Kit. Now, it comes with this nice little nylon pouch made by Zulu Nylon Gear. Move that out of the way. And uh, they make them in black with red lettering, and they also make it in coyote tan with black lettering. Um, I, didn't get really, I didn't get a choice. I was just sent, with the, I was sent this one. Uh, it's very cool. It's I like it with the black and the red. You can see it's screen printed on there. Easily signifies that this is um, a medical kit. And it has a contents list on the outside. So as you can see it comes with combat gauze, LE. Same thing, it's a quick clot hemostatic gauze. A SWAT T tourniquet, uh, slash pressure bandage. And nitrile gloves. Um, so that's one advantage this has over the ETA kit is that the ETA kit does not come with a tourniquet. The EDC kit, however, does. Now the SWAT T tourniquet is a soft tourniquet. It looks like a piece of inner tube material. You guys know like what that is if you have a swimming pool or whatever. But it's basically, um, you, you can hear again, I, I recommend looking up some videos online about it, but it's a stretchy, soft tourniquet and uh, use it and you basically just stretch it all around, like wrap it around. It doesn't have, you know, the crank on it like some of the uh, the cat tourniquets. 
but it's just a, it's very different but I know a lot of people who actually prefer this over the ones with the crank handle like the cat tourniquet the combat at, combat application tourniquets because these are more compact and I've heard reports of these breaking less and these being more durable and just uh, a couple of people I've talked to said that the cat tourniquets aren't it's not really necessary to have the crank it's it's nice but I've heard that the, the SWAT tourniquet works just as well. I have no experience with it. All I have to go by are some stories of some medical professionals who have told me that they swear by them. So anyway, you get this little nylon pouch. Um, ITS Tactical also sells a, a little pouch. It's a nylon Molly compatible pouch that has a little flap with Velcro. It's called uh, the Slimline. I actually ordered one of those a few days ago. It should be here tomorrow. And that is specifically for carrying this kit. It's also made by Zulu Nylon Gear. But uh, when you order this, you will get this nylon pouch. And it is waterproof, and uh, it's just a pretty nice pouch. But it has this little flap. My only complaint with this pouch, and why I wanted the Slimline, is because this would be very difficult to open up and access your items uh, one-handed. And one of the things that I like to talk about and stress and things that I look for in trauma kit pouches is how easy is it how easy is it to access with one hand because a lot of the times what you're going to get is an, an arm or a hand injury in the event of a severe arm or hand injury um, you're only going you're going to be very limited you're going to be limited to only using one of your hands so it's very in my opinion important to think about uh, your system and making sure that it's easy to access one handed because like I said that may be all you have to use um, so anyway, and then this pouch fits perfectly. This is the EDC kit. It, it also has an expiration date and uh, a list of contents. So you see the Quick Clock Combat Gauze, Slot T Tourniquet, and Nitro Gloves. So here again, it is in a vacuum sealed package with a resealable, with a uh, little Ziploc for sealing it back up. So as you can see, you can kind of see some of the items down in there, but as you can tell, the uh, the SWAT T tourniquet is very very small. But like I said, definitely look up some videos on that and uh, familiarize yourself with it. I think it's a uh, from from the looks of it, the videos that I've seen, and like I said, the testimonials that I have read, it, it is a very good tourniquet, especially for the money. But I've actually been carrying this in my pocket. Uh, this will fit in your back pocket of your jeans fairly comfortably. I mean, it is I mean, it is a big chunk, and it's hard because it's all vacuum sealed. But this is the smallest, most, well, how should I put this? This is the smallest to capable, I guess you could say, uh, trauma kit that I've seen. Uh, now, when I say most capable, I mean I've seen a lot of trauma kits that are a little bit bigger than this, but don't have the same capabilities. They don't have the hemostatic gauze and they don't have a tourniquet. Two things that are very important to control bleeding. Now really, you don't want to use a tourniquet unless it's like a severing, uh, you know, if basically you don't really want to use a tourniquet unless you're going to lose the limb. Or, you know, if like let's say uh, your hand gets severely injured, uh, you're missing fingers, your tendons are sticking out, uh, you're, you're probably going to lose the hand, so, and if you're bleeding profusely, you'll want to use the tourniquet. Or, you know, same goes with your arm. If it's an extreme arterial bleeding situation, you'd want to try to use the tourniquet. But, like I said, it's one of those, it's one of those iffy subjects. You know, a lot of people, they talk about, you know, tourniquets will cut off circulation, make you lose the limb. A lot of people say that it doesn't. A lot of people say it depends on the time you have the tourniquet on. Some people said it makes blood clots, yada, yada, yada. I have no idea. I have no personal experience with using a tourniquet. But what I know is that in the event that, God forbid, you'd have to use something like this, that's not something you're going to worry about. You're going to worry about saving a life, not necessarily a limb. So, there's that. So, like I said, this is very compact for a capable trauma kit that could, like I said, possibly save your or someone else's life. And then this is an even more capable trauma kit, something that would fit easily inside of an everyday carry pouch, uh, like an everyday carry backpack, and uh, your glove box of your car. If you're a law enforcement officer, 
This would be an excellent kit to keep like in your glove box, in the trunk, or even just a civilian. This is an excellent option to keep in the glove box of your car. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are not willing to drop the kind of cash that you'd spend on a kit like this. But this is the best of the best, the items that is included with this. And they're all put together by hand here in America. I believe these are all American-made products inside these packages. So you pay a little extra for that also. But I cannot stress to you guys enough the importance of having a kit similar to these on you. It doesn't have to be this particular kit. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to just, I'm not trying to sell you this kit necessarily. Uh, what I'm saying is that if you were to make your own kit with similar, like, items to these, you could possibly save your life or someone else's. Now, like I said, I know a lot, not a lot of people want to drop the cash necessary to build a trauma kit because it can get pricey. But I know for a fact for around $50, you can make a very capable trauma kit that will save someone's life. And like I said, I cannot, I cannot stress to you guys enough the importance of of carrying a trauma kit every day because recent events have shown that anything can happen to anybody at any time with uh, with mass shootings on the rise you know terrorist attacks such as you know like the uh, the Boston Marathon bombing I, I know a lot of not a lot of people would consider that a terrorist attack but I would just things like that bombings um, even something as common as traffic accidents uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a gunshot or a stab wound that you're healing. It could be something like a car accident where someone has, you know, a piece of glass or a piece of car shrapnel uh, that went through their body or still stuck in them and they're bleeding. You could use one of these kits on them also. You know, like I said, it doesn't have to be something as traumatic as a shooting. But, like I said, these things happen every single day. Um, and it only takes a few minutes for someone to bleed out, but and I'm not, I'm not um, downgrading the importance of EMS, but it can take an EMS vehicle several, several minutes to respond. And uh, that's not factoring in natural disasters, such as the recent ice storms we've had, where the roads were completely undrivable. Um, and, you know, cars were stuck in the middle of the road because they couldn't get up a hill because it was so icy. Things like uh, hurricanes and tornadoes that are putting debris out in the middle of the road uh, to an active shooter scenario where EMS vehicles will not respond to a shooting unless, you know, the, the shooter or shooters are apprehended. So it could be a half an hour before someone arrives. And like I said, it only takes a few minutes to bleed out. So you could be the only person responsible for yourself, basically. And I always like to live by that. You are the only person who can basically protect yourself. And you may be the only person who, who, who can protect yourself. Uh, that's why I carry a firearm. That's why most of us, I, I'm assuming, you know, most of the people watching this video, you know, you either carry a firearm or you're going to be or you entertain, you know, you like the thought of people carrying firearms on their person. And carrying a trauma kit with you every day Especially this, you could carry this on your person every day. The, I mean, it's the same thing. People saying, well, I don't think it's necessary to carry a trauma kit on me every day. But it's not so unheard of to carry a firearm. You carry a firearm on you every day. And, you know, you may not use it ever. I hope you don't ever have to use it. But you carry it because you might have to use it. Same as this. You hope you never have to use this. But one day, you might. And your life or someone else's life may depend on it. So, especially if, you know, I, I can't really take credit for this kind of stuff. That I didn't think of this myself. I've been watching some videos on it, on it and been reading some blogs and people on my Instagram, people in YouTube comments, whatnot. But it just kind of brought this to my attention. I thought it was, it's worth sharing with you guys. But if you're going to be carrying a firearm every day, um, you know, accidents happen. Accidental discharges happen every day. And sometimes they can be life-threatening. So if something like that happens, you may not have time to rush out to your car to grab your trauma kit. You may be out somewhere where you can't. You may be out in the woods, miles away from your car or whatever. You may be in a store away from your car. And you may have to do something right then and there. 
and that is where something like this comes in. Or, or just any pocket-sized trauma kit you may put together. So, like I said, accidents do happen, especially when you're carrying a firearm. Something can happen to you in the woods. You could run into a tree limb. You know, a small branch may uh, puncture something on your body. Something like this could save your life. But like I said, I know not a lot of people want to shout out the money and just have something like this just in case. But like I said, these are the same people who carry firearms. Something that costs ten times what one of these kits would. And yet, you know, you carry it because you may have to use it. Well, why not carry a trauma kit because you may have to use it? Your life depends on carrying a trauma kit just as much as it depends on carrying a firearm. So, just my two cents, guys. And I really wanted to show you guys these really cool pieces of gear that I think would make a great addition to anybody's everyday carry setup, bug out setup, uh, camping bag setup, you know, anything of that sort. Uh, you know, I think these are just great kits that ITS Tactical put together. Definitely check them out on their website and uh, expect to see some more videos of these items in the future. You know, I'll do some testing while I'll take this bag. I'll rip the bag open, show you guys all the contents individually and explain it. And um, expect some more videos with the EDC drama kit also. Like I said, I'm going to be getting the slimline pouch to put, the, to put this kit in, which will be easily accessed with one hand, or easily accessible with one hand, rather. And uh, like I said, it should be coming in the mail tomorrow. And I'm working on getting some other kits together that I can show you guys. Like I said, I really want to do a video showing you guys a cheaper, um, maybe even more compact version of a trauma kit that you could carry every day. You know, because I, I, I'm all about showing you guys options. You know, I'm not a loyalist. Um, you know, where I'm loyal to one brand, I'm loyal to one particular setup for something. You know, I want to show you guys some options. So, expect those videos in the future. Anyway, guys, if you have any questions about these kits, uh, just let me know in the comments box. Alright, guys, have a great rest of your night. Stay safe, stay sharp, and God bless. Sherman614, peace.